the thing that nobody talks about is how good it should have felt or how good it would have felt to be Porco and eating your mirror. They say Revenge the Disc best served cold after reading all of Attack on Titan. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think Revenge is best served warm. About 98.6 degrees warm. <laughs> What I know is how you could draw a really good picture of the series by how the Titan powers are transferred from person to person. Your mirror is a really good case and a really important case in the whole plot of the story. I like how she parallels the original Your Mirror and being very poor, be, pretty much being a slave, um, and how she went from a slave to getting almost some type of godly status. They both went from having nothing, having nothing to their name to becoming almost a god in a sense. Probably not the way you and me will want to be seen as a god, but they went from worthless to useful. Ymir is a really important part of the story that was not really glossed over, but I like her character a lot because she parallels the original Ymir really well. Ymir specifically, the second one, who was with Historia, even though she specifically wasn't a slave, um, she was seen as one in a way, um, less than, she was dehumanized. She was seen as less than compared to the Marleyan population. The original Ymir was seen in the eyes of the oppressor as holding less value than a pig. They chase her down and they try to kill her. She fell into that tree and she went from being seen as less than a pig to becoming the greatest military asset in history. Um, then if you look at the current Ymir, she was a homeless girl who lived on the streets of Eldia. Um, and then a scammer took her, brought her to that Eldian cult, and at that point, she was seen as a prophet, as a god. She went from having no worth to being extremely useful in a way, um, to having value now. Then, of course, this cult was raided, and then they were paraded around the city, and then the citizens threw rocks and tomatoes at them. Um, I'm thinking tomatoes, I'm not sure, but if they can throw anything, it's going to be a tomato. <laughs> It's gonna be a tomato. And then, of course, they brought him to that sand dune, the infamous sand dune, where later Grisha, you know, meets the same fate, or the Eldian Restorationists are later brought to. And yeah, that, that whole uh, first Eldian cult did wander around Paradis as pure titans for we don't know how long. And Ymir herself, specifically, she wandered around as a pure titan for about 60 years. And that's when she did run into, you know, the infamous four, Annie. Reiner, Bertolt, Bertolt, I don't know, Bertolt, that nigga has a difficult name, Annie, Reiner, Bertolt, and Marcel, and she ends up bodying Marcel, like, she ate that nigga like that was the last scrap in a bowl, and she has ate in five days. So, so, G -O -O -D good. But you know, the crazy thing is she hasn't eaten in 60 years, well, we don't exactly know, bodying the fuck out of Marcel, just eating that nigga up. She left nothing. First time, they raid the Eldian cult. Ymir turns to the pure titan, then eats Marcel, the brains of the operation that was going to get, you know, Marley, the founder of Titan. The crazy thing about this whole situation is, it's kind of very similar to what happened with Grisha. The Eldian restorationists did meet the exact same fate. Um, Grisha, Dina, and a couple other people, of course, were turned to pure titans and knocked out the sand dunes. This Grisha will later eat, you know, Aaron's mom, of course. And then, this same Grisha will show the power that Eldian blood holds to the Titan Shifter when she did come to contact with Aaron, and that's when Aaron first used the coordinate. The Owl transferred his powers to Grisha. Grisha took the attack Titan to Paradis, ends up bodying the royal family there, taking the founder, then, you know, of course, Grisha transfers these powers to Aaron, the last person. I think a Marleyan soldier or anybody in Marley will want to get these powers. If you take a look at the Ymir situation, how she ate Marcel, every time the Marleyan military raided one of these Eldian cults, it ended up putting them in a worse position than before. It was literally a Uno reverse every time they raided an Eldian cult. So in both of these situations, Marley attacked the Eldian groups but the Eldian groups, in a way, got the last laugh. But the thing that is really the biggest point of this video is after all of that, it was kind of like, it was kind of a game of tag. Somebody touches you, you get to touch them back. In a way, it's tit for tat. 
is tit for tat for the Eldians and the Marlins. Every time something happens, um, boom, the Eldians get a point. Boom, the Marlins get a point. Boom, the Eldians get a point. Marley lose a point. Oh, now Marley gets two points. Eldians lose two. I think the person who gets the biggest point <laughs> is Porco. Um, Porco was supposed to go on the trip originally. Marcel makes Porco look bad to make sure that Reiner goes instead of Porco. He's trying to save the love, bro. Respectable. But after all that, imagine being Porco. You don't know all this information. You're left in the dark. You feel like a bitch because the person you thought was a bitch ends up going ahead of you. Imagine being in Porco's shoes. You talked all that shit. You really let your nuts hang a little too early. And now they're caught in a cold breeze. <laughs> and now he's worried about his brother going to the devil's island. He thought he was going to be the one who's going to inherit the next titan power and be able to go with his brother Marcel. Imagine you're going through all that. Annie, Bertolf, and Reiner decided to continue on to the mission. And they come back with nothing but the person who ate Marcel and information. That's it. Now Porco gets to eat Ymir. Avenger's brother be able to fight alongside the other honorary Marlins. And also, Porco's gonna be able to prove himself as worthy because he still doesn't know exactly why he was never able to go on that first trip to Paradise with Annie, Bertha, Marcel, and Reiner. So, yeah, for Porco, it was a pride thing, um, it was a revenge thing, and it was also justice. In his eyes, in Porco's eyes, that was the best form of justice he could have ever gotten out of that situation. I mean, Porco got to deal justice by his own hands, deliver karma with his own hands in the exact same way that Ymir did it to Marcel. Um, so I know that definitely felt good. Um, people like to say that revenge is best served code because of that element of surprise. I like the situation between Ymir and Porco so much. I like it because it was completely warm in the sense. That was in code. She saw it coming when she was captured. She knew she was going to be dead. It was also warm in that sense that Ymir was literally that warm disc. The scene where she comes back to Reiner and Bertolt even after they try to capture her pretty much sums up why she's one of my favorite characters in Attack on Titan. She gives me Katniss, <laughs> Katniss Everdeen vibes or she gives me she really has a heart made full metal. Revenge plays an extremely huge role in this series. From how Aaron declares that he'll kill every Titan in the first episode when his mother is killed in the front of his eyes. By the same hate that you see in Eldia when the Eldian Restorationists were later turned to pure Titans and, you know, placed outside Paradise Island. And these same Titans are the ones who later run to Aaron. And Aaron later runs over the world. But if you take a look at the current chapter, um, chapter 136, it really shows exactly how deeply ingrained the theme of revenge is in the story. Even in the midst of Armageddon, the Eldians and the Marlins are still at each other's necks. Earlier in the video, I did talk about how revenge is a dish best served cold. In terms of this series, if you take a look at it literally, it's best served warm, of course, because they eat human bodies. The best example of how revenge really does play out in the series goes as this. An eye for eye only makes the whole world blind. I don't know who shot the first shot. It was probably Odin or it could have been a Marlan. But as soon as that person shot, his friend shot for him. That's an eye for an eye. Instead of trying to work together to save themselves, they decide to fight each other and die. They're more focused on revenge than survival. So at this point, they're blind. Because what are eyes to a dead man? I see y'all when I see y'all, man.